Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome to another Sega Wall uh, channel update, pickups, the general affair. Wow guys, the last two weeks have flown. They really have. Starting to get a bit of normality back in our lives now. The lockdown here in the UK is lifting week on week and it's just been really, really busy, quite chaotic. But getting to meet and, and um, friends, family, loved ones. Um, a lot of my time has been spent doing that the last couple of weeks. And retro in general has had to take a back seat. I've got so many videos planned. I've decided I'm up bright and early. This is early morning, guys. There ain't no Budweiser's in this, uh, <laughs> at this hour of the day. I'm not that hardcore. So we're on coffee, guys, to wake me up. Um, yeah, I thought today is a great opportunity to, to plow into some videos. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to start off with this video. Because um, there's an awful lot of pickups. Even though Retro's kind of taken a back seat. Bang, we're on it this week, guys. We really are. There's been some absolutely tremendous pickups. Some great gifts from yellow fellow YouTubers. Um, oh, the generosity of the community is unreal. And I'm looking to really return that favour. I really am. I've done a lot of deals with some fellow tubers and done them some great prices. But I'm going through um, crates of stuff that isn't for the wall. It's stuff that was in storage that I'm looking to flip trade on and it's, I'm going to be gifting some of this stuff out because we've got to keep this momentum going, you know. I like to believe what goes around comes around and some of you guys have been really generous for me and if I can't help you out directly, I will help out another fellow YouTuber. That's the plan anyways. So that's a bit of a channel update. We've got an epic, epic pickups. We really have... But this video is going to focus on the norm. We've got a lot of PSP, guys. So if that's not your thing, um, you might want to skip that bit. Um, we've got GIFs, lots of GIFs. We've got some Spectrum, Mega Drive, you name it, guys. We've got it today. I'm going to try not to waffle on too much because there is quite a lot to go through. Are you seeing me in a different light, guys? Um, what I'll do is I'll putting a bit of footage or, or a photo showing you my first gift and I've got to throw a massive shout out and thanks to Pete Armour on a retro tip. That guy has been absolutely tremendous with me and as you guys know what I've gone through in my personal life, I regard Pete as a really good friend as I do many tubers, there's loads of you. Um, but yeah, me and Pete chat quite a bit. And he's invested in and got himself a new light and rig. And he has gave me for absolutely for nothing. He didn't want postage. He sent me these light boxes. And wow, they're such an upgrade to what I was using. I was using some really old tripod photography spotlights that had these brollies in them. Basically like the umbrella um, effect. And yeah, they were awkward bulky and kept falling over so it's great um, because since I've moved into here there's not an awful lot of natural light this is morning and it's dull as in here so with these lights it really brightens up the saber wall and I think they look fantastic so thank you so much Pete for those um, and we'll keep that going um, another guy that I oh, there's so many of you it's it's, it's mental um the amount of friends I've made since doing YouTube is unreal and genuine friends. Some of my best friends I've made and through the lockdown and things like that, you really focus on that sort of thing. You get your perspectives in place, you really do. And another great friend, a guy, I love his channel, I love his content, and that is Dave Birdsall. Um, Dave Retro Games Played Badly. And he's gifted me some Spectrum games. Uh, a couple of weeks back now, he sent me a picture of a bundle of games he must have acquired from somewhere just to get, a, as you do with Spectrum, 
you'll buy a bundle for a couple of games and then flip the rest. And he's kindly sent me these as a gift, free of charge. And first up, we've got Silkworm, um, a re-release on Mastertronic Plus. But I can remember me and my mate Chris back in the day loving Silkworm. One of you controls a helicopter and the other uh, a jeep. And I can remember having hours of fun. One of the first, like, aside from side scrolling beaters, beat em ups and things like that, and one-on-one -on -one fighters, this was a co-op game that was kind of unique for the time, Silkworm. Really enjoyed that. So first of all, Silkworm. And then a game I have a lot of memories for, not on the Spectrum, but on the Amstrad. And uh, someone that was a good friend of mine growing up, he lived on the same street as me. I had a Spectrum, he had an Amstrad. And we played this game an awful lot on his Amstrad, and that is Oh Mummy. And I'm really looking forward to playing the Spectrum port because I don't believe I ever have. I've never played this game. And back then I kind of thought that it was like an Amstrad exclusive because it was on the Amsoft label. I didn't realise this got a Spectrum release, so I'm really looking forward to playing that. Oh Mummy, great game, great little game. Then another classic, and I was quite shocked that I don't own any of these in um, my Spectrum collection so far. And it's, <laughs> some would say, the mascot of the Spectrum, and that's Horace. Horace goes skiing. Loads of memories of this. I remember loving this game. It was an early game I played on the Specky back in the day. Looking forward to giving that a blast. The Spectrum's been kind of... I was really focused on the Spectrum and playing it a lot, but over the last, and you're gonna see with future videos, guys, why that's kind of taken a bit of a backseat. There's no love lost there. It's what I do, I tend to rotate through all the different consoles. The Mega Drive is number one, it always is. That's my go-to, but the others, I kind of cycle through them. And the Specky at the moment, I have got so much planned for the Spectrum. Another game. <laughs> That, um, oh, I've got to take a sip of coffee, guys. It's got to be done. Ooh. Another game that um, everyone couldn't believe, you know, everyone on Sinclair for Sale and all the Spectrum forums and Facebook groups always laugh and joke that every Spectrum collector has this game, and I don't. So, um, Dave has sent me that, and that's Checkered Flag. And, you know, it's the first... I think the first racing game I ever played was Pole Position in the arcades. Um, I can remember it was Pole Position and then shortly after playing Turbo on a family holiday. Um, but I loved, I loved Pole Position. That game just captures you and draws you in, in the arcades. And I can remember getting it on the Spectrum and it just wouldn't load. It would, it would go all the way through to the end and then just crash out. So frustrating. Um, the checkered flag was an old faithful and it loaded every time and for the time It was it was a solid. It was a competent racer. It really was I really enjoyed that back in the day and another game um, is Skating USA um, I just liked the cover. I liked the box art and I thought yeah, I wouldn't mind giving that a go um, So yeah, thank you so much Dave absolutely made up with that mate and the generosity doesn't stop there, it really doesn't. Next up, we're going on to a PSP theme. <laughs> oh dear. Dads and lads gaming. Marcus, I blame you. I blame you for this rabbit hole, I really do. I think I mentioned in one of my pickups videos, maybe going for a full UMD video set on the PSP. And I think Marcus has tried to like egg that along a bit. And he sent me free of charge again. Wouldn't take postage. The generosity, guys. Oh, my God. You guys are just fantastic. And, um, yeah, he sent me some films to get me started. Um, I have got a couple. Um, but he sent me The Simpsons Movie. And my daughter it loves this film. She absolutely adores The Simpsons Movie. She's not really into the TV series so much. Um... But she loves the movie, so that's great, that is. She is going to adore that. Just don't know if we're going to have enough room to display everything. And then we've got SWAT. 
don't think I've ever seen that film. Never seen it. Might give it a watch. Looks like your typical cheesy action film of the early noughties. And then a really funny film, and I haven't seen this for a few years, Dodgeball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can remember actually really quite liking it. You know, the cheesy, funny humour. It's going to be great, isn't it? So, Dodgeball, grab life by the balls. Um, and then uh, an odd one, never really, way beyond me, this one. Um, ben 10, heard of it, it's toys, isn't it? Um, cartoon, like a Saturday morning cartoon. Cartoon Network. But yeah, Ben 10, Race Against Time, the film. And then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the feature film. Is this one of the Nickelodeon feature films? Can remember not really liking the style of the turtles then. And um, yeah, for me, my, my, the nostalgia for turtles, I did like turtles uh, quite a lot back in the day, like every kid did, but it didn't stick with me. And um, you know, all the kids that had turtles, toothbrushes, t shirts, bed spreads, yeah, I didn't go that far. You know, I watched the cartoon a bit, kind of like the games. I'm going to be a bit controversial and say that. The Turtles games aren't my favourite side scrolling beaters, far from it. You know, they're okay. Um, but a lot of the Konami sort of side scrollers all fall into that same trap. They get a little repetitive. Um, and they're all basically the same game, just with a different <laughs> a different skin, in my opinion. But yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I did promise that I weren't gonna keep waffling because we've got loads to go through, didn't I? <laughs> Oh, I can't help it, guys. I was kind of thinking, because it's early morning, I wouldn't be so hyped up, but nah, that ain't work. <laughs> right, so thank you so much, Dads and Lads Gaming. You seriously have got me borrowing down another rabbit hole, ain't ya? <laughs> so yeah, we'll stick with the PSP thing. And then this is another massive shout-out to... Paul Richardson, a fairly new YouTuber, great content, love his channel, all from his shed, and that's Retro B8, uh, a lovely lad, I talked to him loads on Facebook Messenger, really, really nice guy, and um, he said he was sorting through some bits, said that he um, w watches the videos and said that, you know, oh, I've found some PSP stuff that's no interest to me, is it interest to you, um, and it turned out I didn't have any of them, you know, because I am early in and I've got none of these titles. So, um, yeah, let's go through some of those guys. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do that so we can get these across because there's a lot, guys. There's a lot. Paul, you're a legend, mate. He sent these out to me. I've said to him that I've probably got some bits that, you know, I'll send back to him. He's chosen a game or two. That he wants, so um, as I'm sorting, I'm piling them up for him, and I'm going to return the favour, Paul. Definitely, mate. Um, first of all, we've got Call of Duty Roads of Victory. I've not gone through these yet. I literally opened the box. See, they were from the PSP games from Paul, and look, they're all in great condition. But Call of Duty Roads to Victory. Never played it, guys. Is it any good? And then we've got Batman the video game. I can remember getting this, I'm sure that was this one I got on the DS. Someone got it for me for Christmas or birthday. And I remember being disappointed because it didn't play as good as the console releases. Because um, in the early days of the Lego games, I was kind of, I kind of quite enjoyed playing them. They're quite relaxing just sitting there chilling out to them. Um, but yeah, I've kind of lost interest in them quite a bit nowadays. But the early ones I did really enjoy. To a series of games that has been long forgotten, really. And I loved this series of games by EA Sports. And that was Fight Night. Fight Night Round 3. I can remember when the Xbox 360 first launched the Fight Night game. I think it was Round 3. I'm not sure. Correct me in comments if I'm wrong, guys. I'm sure it was Round 3 that was, like, fairly close to launch on the 360. And that was the first true game that I felt showed the power of that new generation. I remember being amazed by it. 
and it introduced me properly to online gaming. I can remember absolutely loving playing Fight Night um, online and yeah, I'm sure I've got fond memories of this on the PSP too. It's a series of games that they really should bring back. Loved it. And then we're going to go on to um, quite a few FIFA games. We've got FIFA 06, FIFA 09, FIFA 010. So what I'm going to do, guys, is just bundle them up together there. FIFA is FIFA in it at the end of the day. But if I'm going to collect these games, they're needed. Um, a game that, a series that I can remember really getting into back in the day. Um, again, I believe it was on the Xbox 360. And um, a lot of games come out at this time. So I remember really enjoying it. But then other games came out. And this kind of got sort of chucked by the side. And I've never played the PSP version. So I'm really looking forward to going back to this game. And that is Test Drive Unlimited. I remember really enjoying these the early ones of these games. Really, really good races. Very arcadey. And um, kind of open world, if I remember as well. So I'm looking forward to giving that a blast on the PSP. And then we've got the Simpsons game, which I'd imagine plays just like the PlayStation 2 release. Um, so yeah, really chuffed to add that to the collection. And then we've got MotorStorm Arctic Edge. Now, something that's really exciting about the PSP is it was a hell of a platform for races. It really is. Now I've gone back to it. You kind of, I'd kind of forgotten how great the PSP was for all the races. There's so many great arcadey races that got released. And um, yeah, MotorStorm, Arctic Edge. So, you know, you just got a flood of awesome arcade races. One of my favourite genres. And it's going to be great to go back to them. Then we've got the more simulator Gran Turismo. Awesome game. We don't really need to rabbit on about that. And then The Sims 2. <laughs> Which, yeah. I've never been a huge fan of The Sims games. I never really got it, to be fair. But I know I know people that are going to love this. Um, Eden, I'm sure she'll enjoy it. Um, so, yeah. Lots of people love The Sims so there we go. How generous of Paul. Thank you, Retro B8. Absolutely chuffed to bits with those. Um, really, really steamrolling into the PSP. It was supposed to be just a slow moving, you know, as and when I see them in charity shops, car boots, that sort of thing. Pick them up when they're cheap. But this is fantastic. The, the collection's growing fast, a bit like the Wii did a year ago. <laughs> but yeah, what we'll do is we'll stick with um, PSP. And um, what I'm going to do is move these down here like so. So we can focus on the next stack. Cool, look at that. We're going to have a shelf full of PSP at this rate, aren't we, guys? <laughs> but yeah, we'll stick with PSP. Now... As soon as CEX declared it was open in my town, I went there that day because I've been sorting out through lockdown a lot of stuff that, you know, I've had in storage for trade. And I kind of mentioned that I wanted to thin some of the Wii down. And I just scanned a load of games in that I know I'm not going to play. Maybe games that I would like back in the collection at some point. But while the prices were high, I just traded this stuff in. I traded in a Wii. Um, a load of um, Wii games and peripherals and took all that down to CEX and um, traded it in. Got an absolutely awesome <laughs> voucher price for it. You know, this stuff owes me pennies, probably the whole lot of tenner. And I got over a hundred pound in trade. Um, I got a voucher. I got 50 quid for the console. And I think it was 78 quid for the game. So, you know, all in all, like nearly 130 quid. And I was absolutely chuffed with that. I've not spent them vouchers yet. I'm going to do that for a video. I'm going to um, obviously invest in some Mega Drive games that I need. And 
What's really popular on YouTube, and I really enjoy watching them, is the CEX roulette video. So I might do a one-off one of those. And let's just see how Sega Zombie fares in that. Um, but yeah, while I went on this shopping trip... Sorry for the jump cut there, guys. I just took a sip of the coffee and it went down the wrong Oh My God, just had a coffin fit. Um, but where are we? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, after that... Um, Locally, not far from CX, we've got a cash converters, and I thought, why the hell? I'm in town. Um, I had some time to burn while waiting for them to test the Wii. Um, so yeah, I went to cash converters, and they had a load of PSP stuff in there, and they were just selling it off really, really cheap. There's um, three games that I paid a little bit more for, but all of these games here were so cheap it was unbelievable um we've got everybody's golf which that was um 199 i didn't mind paying that i don't mind everybody's golf so yeah 199 and then we've got football manager handheld one for cine steve there i'd imagine he'd like this one um 75 pence and then we've got Virtual Tennis World Tour, and I loved this game on the PSP. I loved it on everything, you know, the Dreamcast, and then the PSP, loved it a lot. 75p. We've got FIFA 06 again. <laughs> so we've got a dupe, guys, and that was 75p. And then we've got a couple of UMDs, which were 75 pence each, and we've got Resident Evil Apocalypse. And Kiss of the Dragon. So we've got some more UMD movies which we can put into the movie pile there. And then these ones were a little bit more. I think these ones were $2.99, if I remember rightly. Um, yeah, they were $2.99, these ones. I've got Resistance Retribution Collector's Edition. So it's in a nice little cardboard sleeve. In pretty good condition. Got some stickers stuck on there. But yeah, it's got all the all the manuals in there. Oh, look at these. What's all this? Loads of postcards. And they're all in there, I believe. They're all in there, guys. Protect your PSP with continuous play. Whoa. Another leaflet flying off there. How to get your free resistance retribution content. But yeah, fantastic condition for $2.99. I weren't going to let it stay there for that, you know. And then a game I've been actually looking out. I bidded on this one like I did when I won Afterburner. I kept bidding on um, Crazy Taxi. Um, but kept missing that on eBay. It kind of goes for like a tenner. And, you know, for me, really, I only want to buy cheap pocket money PSP games at the moment. Because, um, you know, it's not a main focus. And that's Crazy Taxi Fair Wars. And for 2 99 guys, it's absolutely mint as well. It's in lovely condition, this. Um, been playing Crazy Taxi a lot on my Dreamcast. And then... When we finally get to that room tour video, which has been delayed somewhat because I still haven't got that last shelving unit. But I have set the Dreamcast up on my 60 inch 4K telly. And I've been really playing a lot of Dreamcast in the evenings. And I've been playing Crazy Taxi a lot, so it's going to be great to play Crazy Taxi on the PSP. 2 99 And then, I you know me, I'm a sucker for a compilation. I think that comes from when I was young, birthdays, Christmases, family and friends always bought me like the compilation sets on the Spectrum and I really, really look forward to that. As much as I did get in my yearly annual at Christmas, you know, like Batman, Star Wars, you know, you name it, um, Christmas annuals and things like that, it was always a tradition to get a compilation game as well. On the spectrum, and, and it kind of stuck with me. I love a good compilation on all the systems, 
And this one is Midway Arcade Treasures Extended Play. We've got some classics on here. Spy Hunter, Sinistar, Defender, Paperboy, 720, Clax, Joust, Marble Madness, Tubin, Rampage, Gauntlet, Rampart, Wizard of War, Zybots, Championship Sprint, Arch Rivals, Cyberball, 2072, Xenophobe, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3. What a lineup, guys. Some tremendous games there. <laughs> I can't wait to play some of these. I really can't. On the PSP. So I know many of you are going to say, well, just emulate your PSP, you know, get them all on emulators. But I'm a sucker for these compilations. I love them. I really do. There's quite a few on the PSP that I wouldn't mind getting. I'm going to risk it, guys. I'm going to go for another sip of coffee because it's going to get cold. Cool, that was gingerly taken down. <laughs> so, yeah, there, that's it. I promise, guys, the PSP. But, yeah, there we go. Let's move all of those along there. Look at that. We're getting... With the others that I've already got, there's going to be a shelf from the PSP there. I need to get... The, the new shelving unit, I really do. Um, but finally, as promised, I'm Sega Zombie. This is a Sega Wall video. We've got to have some Sega. And we're going to end with some Mega Drive. And my good friend, another guy that I regard as a really close friend. And that's um, Steve, Cine Steve. A great, great guy. He's helped me tremendously so much. Um over the years he really has um anything to do with the amiga and arcades and anything like that he's a top top lad he he's got a heart of gold he really has a lovely guy and he's um sorted me out a tremendous um bundle he sent me a picture and said these are all my dupes mega drive you know is there anything interesting and i couldn't believe it literally in this one picture I needed the majority of them, and considering I'm down to like 130 games needed, that is impressive that he had so many I needed, and he couldn't believe it neither. He's like, wow, you need that many. I'm glad I sent that picture to you, and he's done me a fantastic deal on these. So let's run through them. These are all kind of shelf filler, guys. Um, first up, we've got an EA game, and that is Where in Time is Carmen San Diego. So, yeah, in really nice condition for an EA release. You know, sometimes these boxes go horrible. These thick old books that I absolutely detest getting out of the case, which is why I'm not going to do it. It's in really good condition. So, really pleased with that one. And then we've got Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? I don't know which one came first, actually. Which was the first one? That one's 92. Oh, they're both 92, so perhaps they could be released at the same time. I don't know, but there you go, guys. There's those two games. A game I was really shocked that I didn't have, and I've obviously got it on one, on one of the Mega games, definitely. But I haven't got the standalone columns. This one's got a little tiny bit of fade on the spine. But like I said to Steve, you know, the real nostalgic games to me, the games that I owned or wanted as a kid... And, you know, some of the heavy hitters condition is kind of important to me. You know, I want it in good condition and complete. But with some of the fillers, I'm not too fussed if it's got a little bit of age, a little bit of wear, a little bit of fading. It doesn't bother me too much. Ben. To be quite honest, this is in absolutely lovely condition. The manual is crisp. The cartridge is absolutely spotless. Lovely. Um, but, yeah, it's got a little tiny bit of fade on the spine there. Really not fussed. Great game, Columns. Uh, got a lot of memories of Columns. Mostly on the Game Gear. Played it a lot on the Game Gear. Um, but yeah, fantastic puzzle game. And I cannot pronounce this guy. So I'm just going to say Mario Hockey. <laughs> Lemonux? Lemonux? I have no idea how you pronounce that, guys. But yeah, an ice hockey game. Used to love a good ice hockey game back in the day. This is not one I don't think I've ever played, though. I don't know this one. Is it any good, guys? Let me know in comments. So, yeah. Lovely, clean, great condition. 
And then I've got a Menasa down here behind me, which I've had in the collection a long time. Um, and it's missing the game. I haven't got the game in there. So to make that complete, I've got the Menasa six game cartridge included. Um, I don't think I've played this since way back when. I really haven't. Um, the Menasa, the 16 bit, I loved the guns on the 8 bits, I really did. I loved the Master System. And yeah, the NES with Duck Hunt um, were really, really good. And I, I kind of felt that the 16 bit era failed with light gun games massively, really. Uh, sorry from the Lethal Enforcers games, they were pretty good, but the actual official licensed guns were awful you had that super scope thing on the super nintendo which was god awful big bazooka on your shoulder what on earth was that all about um and the menacer um cool concept but execution wise not great they're not the most accurate neither and i think a lot of it was down to them the technology not quite being there for them to be wireless i think that's where a lot of the issues with them are um but yeah, I've not played this since back in the day, but it's in absolutely, again, fantastic condition, Steve. Love it, mate. And then we've got International Rugby. Again, a game I've never played. Complete, lovely condition. And then I've got Pete Sampras 96, but I haven't got Pete Sampras, the original. So... Again, I used to absolutely detest Pete Sampras. Kind of liked Wimbledon. Well, it wasn't that I liked Wimbledon. It was that we were forced to watch it because my mum adores tennis and she loves Wimbledon. And as growing up as a kid, we just had to watch it. You know, as all what was on television um, that time of year. And I don't know why I, I, I really didn't like Pete Sampras. Don't know why. Probably a really nice bloke. But, you know, just had that face. <laughs> Don't know what it is, but yeah. So I've never played his tennis games. When I don't mind a good tennis game. Remember, like I said, mentioned earlier, absolutely loved the virtual tennis games. That reignited my love for the tennis game. Um, but early on, I remember Super Tennis on the Super Nintendo launch game. Absolutely adored that. There you go, Alex. I'm talking about the Super Nintendo, mate. <laughs> and then finally, Ultimate Soccer. A game, a game I've never played. This one, a little bit of dog ear into the corner there. But overall, great condition. Perfect as a filler title. So there we go. An absolutely awesome bundle from Cine Steve. 35 quid for that bundle. Brilliant, mate. Absolutely chuffed to bits with that. Um, Cine Steve's going to get mentioned a lot. <laughs> In, in an up-and-coming video, which I'm going to get out real soon, guys. And I'm really, really buzzing about that. Oh, my God, I can't wait to share that with you guys. But that's it for this video, guys. Let me know in comments what games are any good, what you remember nostalgia-wise on any of these. And, um, yeah, until the next time, guys, I'm Sega Zombie. Goodbye. <laughs>